Hi guys. It's been, been a little while. I know. Today in our video, we will, in addition to, of course, an update about everything. I'm so sorry. Uh, we will cover how to maintain positivity and focus in the midst of a setback. Hopefully this will apply to all of you runners out there, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter how much or how little you run. Okay, this is one of my, one of my favorite, one of my favorite spots in Paris. Just thought I would share. So Jake, what have you been up to? Well, I'm still, uh, still living in Paris. So that's gorgeous. Still running, of course, you know, getting my jog in. I haven't had a race. And since the last race, since the ten, I haven't had a race since the uh, since the ten k. Couldn't tell you why. I don't know. Things have been going going good. Let's it's life, you know, up and down, all that good stuff. I guess that leads me to the topic of today's video. Which is like I said before. So I had a terrible update. I mean, I've been running. I've been, I've been running. I've been living. Nothing extraordinary. Paris is great. Food's good. Getting cold in Northern Europe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the real, the real thing has been, you know, I had these setbacks with my races, and I'm sure if anyone has been watching my channel for some period of time. I haven't had like the best races, you know? It seems like after every race, it doesn't always go according to plan. I don't feel 100% and I'm not racing as well as as I could, as my training indicates I can. And it feels like I'm not fulfilling my potential, right? It's been a theme ever since my marathon 2017, 252, training before 240, Next year, train for 240 again, 249, 10K, another 10K. And so, what it what ultimately it means is I, I kind of like, I recognized that I had a problem, like I had a running problem. And it was unfortunately outside the scope of kind of my expertise. It's not physical, it's not, about physiology, it's not about training volume and muscle fibers and cars, nutrition, or any of that stuff that like my background, my, my, my experience is in, my education's in. So if you know my channel and you know me and you know that if I try to identify problems and find solutions. So what's the problem? How can I solve it so I can improve, so we can improve, so we can get better? It's kind of like what it's all about, right? So what I did, after one of my old races, I think it was the second marathon, I reached out to an old friend of mine from my youth, I was like 16. So when I was like 16, I found a, a sports psychologist, like a mental trainer, specifically to help with competition with race anxiety. I, I did it when, for like a year or two when I was younger, but I didn't kind of like let it run its course, complete the fruition, because it was 16, 17, 18, there's so much going on. And so when I kind of realized this was all going on, uh, I guess again, right? And I wanted to fix it. And he, he's the only person I could really think to call, because I, who do you call about? Like, you know, pick up, uh, being super competitive and not being stressed on race day or, getting good sleep the night before a race because you're, you're, you're not stressed. You, how do you get excited for a competition? How do you show up? You're, you're bringing your best, you know? And so I called him up and we talked and it was, it was great to connect with him again. And um, if this sounds like a plug, it, 
I'm not getting paid or anything. He's a, he's an old friend and um, provides genuinely amazing services. Like, I'll link him in the description below. His name's Dr. Robert Neff. He's the CEO of Mental Training Inc. Beautiful stuff here. We're we're talking like talking like Olympic level mental training. If if you follow like any kind of major major runner, major pro athlete, sometimes they don't always like directly say it, they may indirectly mention, but most professional, most universe, like, like we're talking in like B1 level running schools, uh, for sure Olympic level athletes, like they have access to, to sports psychologists. This is like a, a very, very, very important aspect of every athlete's training. It wasn't back in the 80s, but it kind of slowly ramped up and people are now realizing how important it is. It could be the same in like like uh, international football, American football, basketball, whatever. So I've been working with him, right? And that's kind of like what I've been doing. And I've been running, of course, and I thought it'd be nice to share one, one of the pieces of, of, uh, of help that he, he gave me um, as I've been pursuing this. So I'm like, you can call this like in a running step back. I'm not injured, um, but I'm definitely not in a place of like prime perfection, right? It's like one thing that he, uh, he taught me to do, he suggested I do, he's, a, he's like, hey, Jake, you know, you're, you're, you've done so much. Like, you need to write down your, your successes with your running. And I never, I never really thought about that or bothered with that before, because I, I don't know if you're like me, like you, you achieve a goal and then you kind of move on, but you don't recognize the past goals. And with running, because it's so incremental, I think it's important to, to do that. In fact, I think, I think it's so important that that's why I'm sharing with you, with you today and um, I encourage everybody, if, if you're in a running setback, if you're feeling, if you're injured, maybe you're, you're, you're training a ton, but you're not improving. Maybe, um, you're, maybe you're, yeah, maybe you're running terribly, right? And it's getting worse and worse and worse every week. And, um, take, take a pen, take a piece of paper, put it out by shorthand and, and write out some of your actual, your running successes, what you've accomplished, um, tangible things that you can say like oh my gosh you know I, I did that it could be a race time it could be a race position it could be something specific like like maybe you adjusted your form somehow maybe it could be like a training adaptation that you've adapted to volume i'll share two of mine with you um i think the biggest one this is going to sound crazy so remember like back when i was like 16 i was working with dr bob and everything uh, so i ran for two years high school cross country and, and track and the best times I ever recorded racing for 5K was like 1917, okay? 19 minutes, 17 seconds. Ain't too good for running two years across um, compared to like, you know, some of my teammates and stuff. And my last, my two marathons ago, uh, 2017, the last 5K, the last 5K of my marathon, that's 26.2 miles, 42 kilometers, I ran 17 minutes, 30 seconds for 5K. So from the age of, you know, 18 until the age of 27, I had improved that much to, 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 to not only run faster than I'd ever run before in a race when I, when I was 18, but now I can literally run faster at the end of a marathon. And these are things that like, I share this with you, not, I'm not gloating, I'm, I'm just like, I wrote it down on paper and I became like very proud of it. And it, it becomes something that you kind of hold, you know? Um, I think it's a very good exercise. So to maintain focus, to maintain positivity in the midst of a setback, take a pen and, take a pen and paper, and write down some of your successes. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's absolutely tremendous and it's really important. It's something you can, you can put on your wall and you can reflect on it every day. Um, and it's, you don't have to share with anybody, you can just share with yourself because it's for yourself. It's for you to kind of congratulate yourself, for you to kind of reward yourself and appreciate yourself. More, not reward, but mostly for you to appreciate yourself. And I think that when we are in a setback, we have a tendency to, to be negative. We have like negative self-talk. And I think the opposite is, is best. You, you need to appreciate and kind of champion yourself versus try to notice notice the bad things. You know what I mean? So when we're talking about like, like gradual improvements, 2018 to 2017, that's like a, that's I think I ran in the middle of 18. So it's like a nine, 10 year improvement. It's a decade of running 
got me to that point. It's a gradual sport. It's like turning the pages in a book, page by page. You will improve as long as you're consistent. Writing down the goals will, will just provide perspective. You know, you can scope out a little bit and really just see your progress. I've been improving the sport because that's kind of what it's all about, you know? Um, oh, I promised you a second one, a second um, success. So in high school, I could not run more than 37 miles a week without getting shin splints out of the stress fractures. 37 miles a week is, uh, what's that, 40, 50, around, I want to say like 60 kilometers worth of running a week for shin splints and stress fractures. Now I can run 100 miles a week or 160 kilometers a week and feel nothing. Awesome. I'm so happy with, with my improvement over the course of 14 years, 15 years in total. Awesome. And that's another that's another win I wrote down. It's on my paper. It's in my house. It's on my wall. Something I'll always kind of look at and reflect on. It's a really cool improvement. That's one of my successes. So. So I'll leave you guys here tonight, this beautiful view of the Eiffel Tower, and I hope you guys walked away with something today. I wanted to share something really important, um, but I think it actually genuinely helped people because I don't think most people think of it. So again, a shout out to my friend, Dr. Bob, Dr. Robert Neff. I'll link his, uh, his information in the description below. Like I said, none of this is paid for. This isn't a sponsorship or anything like that. It's just, just wanted to share. And honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I, I am sorry for being such a bad YouTube uh, YouTuber. Um, this is this is really important to me, and I hope it's important to you. And I have I feel like I haven't been properly properly here, kind of uh, providing what I could. You know, I, I think I can make helpful content for people uh, that's entertaining at times, and I want to make sure that happens in the future. So I'm sorry for not being here. Um, I I will make this a a larger priority in my life because I, I think it's I think it's important. I think YouTube's a fantastic space to share and express um, and provide free knowledge and free information. And um, I think if they get from providing it in the way that I am and that I can, that I, I think people can actually benefit from it. So um, I will continue to do it and I'll be more, uh, much more regular about it. And so that's all I'm gonna do for tonight. It is starting to rain because it's Paris. Apparently Paris is known as the rainy city, which I did not know until I moved here. So that's that. Um, And I have to finish my run. I'm doing like, 10 or 11 miles today. I've done like four, 4.8, I think. Hope everyone's doing lovely wherever you are in the world and uh, hope everyone's excited for a nice holiday season. It's the uh, end of October and I will see you guys, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.